What's up everyone? In today's quick tutorial I want to show you how I'm preparing the brick shaders. So I'm gonna start with one of our free textures and by the way you can download 30 brick shaders from the Chocofour store. These are the completely free shaders. Please check out link in the video description but I already drag and drop the diffuse texture to my setup which as you can see is quite simple. Uh, basic principled BSDF shader, very simple scene setup with just some three point lamps. So once I drag and drop my texture, my brick texture, this is the very straightforward result. And if you've been following my videos, I like separating RGB channels, which I'm gonna do with this texture as well. But for a bit more complex materials like bricks, you might want to use some extra maps. So I also have a displacement map created. If I plug it into the color, here you can see how it looks like. So I'm gonna be using this map to create a bump for this shader. And we also have something called the ID map. If I drag and drop it here and connect, you can see it looks pretty funny with those colors. But what's really amazing about this kind of map uh, if you separate its RGB channels, you're actually able to get those three different masks out of it. And these masks can be used for many different things. You can, for example, differentiate the colors using them. You can differentiate uh, the roughness, let's say with the red channel, or you can improve the bump of your shader. So let's see how we can use those three textures. In difference to most of the materials I'm preparing, I will start with a bump. Um, so first thing is I'm decreasing the color to something black and reducing the roughness. So right now I will have a better preview of what's happening within the surface. I'm gonna press Shift A, go to Vector and choose the bump node, connect the normals and plug in the color input to the height. So this is the default result, which is obviously too strong. Let's reduce the distance and let's now reduce the strength to something uh, more usable. So let's say 0.1, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna enhance the roughness a little bit so we have a better preview on what's happening within our bump. I think it looks pretty good as default, but let's now try combining it with one of the color channels. So if I plug uh, one of the ID channels, sorry, here to the height, we will have a result like this. So you can see some of the bricks are a little bit more standing out than the others. Uh, depending on the channel you're gonna use, this effect will vary. Um, but what I'm trying to do, what I will try doing, is connecting one of those channels with the bump input we already have here. To do that, we're gonna need the converter and math node. So let me use the green channel here. Let me use the color input here. And let's reconnect it as height without changing anything in the node itself. I don't think we have much uh, change within our uh, bump, so let's switch the add method to multiply. And once we do that, you can now see we have those ID um, inputs. Let me reconnect it to the color again so we have a better preview. You can now see we have those color ID inputs mixed together with our bump. I think I could leave it this way. Let me try different color channel just so we see the different looks. Yeah, if you, for example, want to create a brick wall with some of the bricks being nice and shiny and the others rough, this could be the way to do that. So with the bump roughly set up, I will now focus on the reflections. Let me disconnect it. Let's copy the separate RGB node and let's use our main colored texture 
separate it to the three channels and let's plug them in to see what results can we get out of them. Let's maybe use the color preview actually. So what we want to have is a white color within those mortar areas and something darker within the bricks themselves. However, if we are using too much contrast for reflections, the bricks will be very glossy. So we might try fixing it later with the uh, color ramp node, but let's see if the inputs themselves can tell us more. Yeah, so this is definitely something we want to avoid. The contrast is too high. So I guess we're gonna stick to the green channel here. Let me uh, rearrange those nodes a little bit so we know what's happening. And yeah, I'm gonna press Shift A now, choose converter and the color ramp node. So let's reconnect it to the roughness. So we have the actual reflection changes and let's now use this white handle and move it to the left. So once I do that, you can see the reflections start looking more natural. I think we could actually keep it like this. Let's try reconnecting the bump. So we have a mixed result. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good and interesting so far. So the final step is now adding a main color to the shader. Let's move those nodes downward and use the main texture input as a base color. I would say uh, you could already take this shader as it looks pretty interesting, but let me also show you how we can use this ID input to differentiate the colors. So I'm gonna press Shift A, go to color and mix RGB. Now I'm gonna connect this color input to the second slot as well. And I'm gonna add the RGB curve and drag and drop it to one of the links. So let's use the above one. Let's move the curve here and let's change its look to something like that. So uh, one of the inputs gets darker and now we are gonna use one of the color channels from the ID texture to decide which bricks will be darker. So let's use the green channel, for example. I'm gonna plug it in here and you can instantly see the effect. So these are the bricks marked from the ID map and I think it's a pretty cool result. You can now use it. You can use different inputs from here to have, well, different patterns. You can create three different wall layouts using just this uh, one node setup. It might look a little bit complex, but as always, if you are building it yourself from scratch, you probably know what's happening. So thanks everyone for watching. I really hope you learned something new today. And remember, you can download 30 free brick shaders from the Chocofer store and play with all those amazing settings yourselves. As for now, that's it for me and see you in another video. Bye bye.